Hello, welcome back. This time we'll be talk talking about the mainframe entertainment series reboot. Um, I have fantastic memories of reboot growing up as a child, uh, visiting my amas at her retirement home because uh, we didn't have cable and she did. Uh, and I'd be remembering uh, I'd walk in and my uh, we'd get all situated talking and uh, keep me busy. They'd turn on cartoons and throw a couple toys in front of me. And my parents would talk to my uh, amma. That's Icelandic for grandma, if you didn't know. Um, uh, and uh, I, I remember the TV lineup back then. Uh, it'd be Reboot, Sailor Moon, uh, Beast Wars, or Beasties here. Uh, and uh, Bump the Night, Pokemon, all the great stuff back then. And just the stuff I have a fond memory of. I'm not going to... Uh, sit here and tell you, oh, back in my day, my cartoons were so much better, blah, blah. Every generation's like that. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> mine's actually legitimate when it comes to any works of mainframe, because they always have top-notch writers, always have great overarching stories, always good uh, character development, always likable characters, and always complexities and unique and quirky personalities. Um, Reboot is no different. It was a fantastic show with a great concept. Uh, it's very Tron-like, but uh, I know very little of Tron. All of I've seen of it, I've seen bits and pieces of the original film, played the video game, the the 2000 uh, no wait, uh, Tron 2.0 killer app, I believe. I played that on the Xbox. Uh, it was a first-person uh, shooter, and uh, that was kind of like the unofficial Tron 2. And then Tron Legacy, I've seen uh, most of the movie. I, I like the style, I like the colors, I like the lights, I like the music and everything, the universe, and... Uh, Besides that, I don't know much. It's very like that, but different. I feel it's more in-depth. It doesn't have that whole Digimon thing of being sucked into the universe. Uh, you're already established there. You're on one of the people. You're already the sprites. And uh, Reboot is known for using terminologies like all other science fictions, like in Star Trek. But it, it's more Star Wars-like, uh, unlike Star Trek, as that it doesn't sit you down and explain it to you. It just goes with the flow like it's just natural, casual talk. Uh, I like that. I, I, uh, that's one thing that I love about Star Wars, and one of the, probably the biggest uh, pluses of Star Wars that it doesn't doesn't fetish si it doesn't uh, doesn't uh, linger on things too long. It just kind of moves on as they were. You know, it's just another normal day. You know, it's a used universe, very much like this in a uh, reboot. And the main characters would be uh, Bob, the Guardian, uh, Dot Matrix, the uh, businesswoman and uh, uh, owner of Dot's Cafe or Dot's Diner, sorry, and uh, Enzo Matrix, the boy, and their dog Frisket. Uh, yes, there's dogs in the digital world. Didn't know that. May maybe it's a Neopet, but <laughs> uh, the first season is pretty good. It's a good introductory to everything. Uh, there's many one-off episodes uh, dealing with racing, you know, firefights and uh, Dungeons and Dragons like thing. The the big, big thing to explain that is that in this universe we have things called the games or game cubes and uh, they fall down onto a city uh, these purple energy cubes and uh, when it falls on top of you you are forced to participate in uh, in a game against the user, us humans. Well I, I guess that's what happens when we load up a disc of DOS box, a DOS box, box, blah, me a stroke um, DOS box or whatever computer game, and when we're killing uh, the, the the AI, we're actually turning them into energy slugs, uh, the nulls. <laughs> it, it's it's a very interesting universe. I can be all here day explaining to you, and all I can say is I, I highly recommend it. Watch season one. It's up here on YouTube because I'm a cheap bastard, and I'm poor. <laughs> uh, job hunting's fun. Um. Aside from that, uh, the last two episodes is a two-parter, I believe, Identity Crisis, uh, and uh, it gets really dark, and throughout the series, throughout the seasons, the show gets progressively darker, and I respect that, I like that, and it doesn't talk down to kids. As I said before in my last review of uh, Tintin, um, I like shows when they don't talk down to kids, and uh, death isn't such a huge taboo issue. Uh, it's a natural part of life, you know? Fucking Yoda told, told us that. Uh, what else I got here? Uh, the voice acting is top-notch, is that a usual? We have Tony J, the legendary Tony J, who played the evil priest in, uh, in The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Uh, he voices Megabyte, a virus, uh, 
who is a very mobster uh, Lex Luthor type character. Uh, he's a lawful, evil character. He's very interesting, and uh, he does possess human, hum superhuman strength, speed, and all that fun stuff. He's very physical, uh, very physically strong, yet he has a certain elegance and bravado to him that uh, he he rather let his incompetent henchmen do it than uh, he would, you know. And then we have Hexadecimal. Uh, she's another virus, and uh, uh, sh imagine... Best way to describe Hexadecimal, imagine if the Joker was the Phoenix. <laughs> or the Joker had the Phoenix's powers. Um, energy projection, flight, matter manipulation, uh, teleportation, all that kind of fun, uh, you know, physics stuff. Uh, and, and, and she's just fucking hopping mad. Uh, else I can say is that, uh, uh, check it out. <laughs> It's a great show. Later on through the season, the animation does get better. It is a bit crude in uh, today's standards. I, I did have... Uh, but but the best way to get through anything of reviewing anything of any show, be it Transformers to He-Man to G.I. Joe or whatever, back in the day, you've got to say... You've got to think in the mindset in the year it was made. And for the year it was made, it was fantastic. Uh, 94, I believe. And... Uh, yeah, check out Reboot. Great show, great season. It's alphanumeric. <laughs>